AMD's 12 and 24 core Threadripper CPUs have launched as of October 29th, 2018, anyway. These CPUs are the cost down versions of the new Threadripper 2 CPUs. We've got so many threads here, I can make a t-shirt. If two painters could paint a room in 64 minutes, two painters painting a room in 64 minutes, could four painters paint a room in half the time, 32 minutes, double the number of painters. Well, what about 32 painters? Could 32 painters paint the room in a minute? Now, intuitively, I think most people would know that turning 32 painters loose in a room is probably a recipe for a mess more so than fast painting. But depending on the actual type of job that you're doing, uh, maybe that makes sense. And so maybe more cores on the desktop makes sense for, for what you're doing. So take our Linux workstation video, compiling the Linux kernel and doing all sorts of Linuxy things. More cores actually does help because cores are kind of like painters in this analogy. And that workstation was based on the Aorus Extreme from Gigabyte and the 2990WX, that's a 32 core processor. Launching today, the 2970WX, the 24 core cost down version of that. Now I can compile, run Ansible and Docker and VM automation all at the same time and barely lose any system responsiveness on that 32 core monster. I, I mean, I love it, it's a dream. I can't convey how awesome and exciting it is to be able to do that. I mean, it really is like Thor's hammer or if you wanna look at that, I mean, 32 cores, it's crazy. It's not a bad value for users that demand that kind of performance and need stuff for that workload, but that's on Linux. And on Windows, it's a little bit of a different story. The 2970WX launched on October 29th, and that's the 24 core version. And so we're gonna take a look at the performance of the 24 core version today. Like it's 32 core sibling, the 2990WX, uh, it's what I've used in all of my testing here. And it has four Ryzen dies in the chip. So just like the 2990, we're talking about four pieces of silicon in the Threadripper package. Now each of those four Ryzen dies in the 2970 has two channels of memory. However, on this Threadripper, only four channels total are connected. So two of the four are connected to memory, two of them are not. So I think that it would be a little bit better if there were eight channels, because there's eight possible channels from the four Ryzen dies, but you know, that's, that's more an epic country. So half of our Ryzen dies do not have direct access to memory or peripheral IO, like networking, graphics, or storage. To get data in and out of the CPU on the 2970, the data has to be sent over Infinity Fabric. And this adds latencies. And on Windows, Windows gets super confused, it seems like. And so it, it seems to spend most of its time shuffling processes around from core to core than actually running them, but only with some programs. And it's a very odd situation. Other programs work great. Other programs, it's like, oh, 24 cores, 32 cores. Oh, that sounds just awesome. Let's totally do this. The TechSpot had extensive benchmarks where, for certain workloads, the 2990 was slower than the 16-core 2950X. And that's sort of crazy because the 2950X costs less than half as much as the 2990. Think about that. 32 cores is slower than 16 cores by a lot. And it's still pretty much the case with the 24-core. I mean, with certain applications, you do have a little bit of a performance re regression. And it's a software thing, it's not a hardware thing because Linux works great. So we found the same thing, we found a lot of the same thing in our testing with the, with the new 2970WX. And so there's bizarre stuff. There's more bizarre stuff like disabling Core Zero while running Indigo, a 3D renderer, would boost performance on Windows. But on Linux, Indigo runs like a champ. So if we side-by-side -side Indigo, which runs on both Linux and Windows, on Linux, it runs awesome. I mean, it's super fast. The benchmark here is insane. But on Windows, it, it runs worse than worse CPUs. Other Windows applications like Adobe Premiere and 7-Zip and games like PUBG and Battlefield have similar trouble with the unusual CPU architecture here, and they often exhibit regressions. So when you've got a faster, better CPU that is slower than a worse CPU, that's a regression. And so AMD's aware of this and they've been working on this. And so they've got something called Ryzen, they've got something called dynamic local mode with the new Ryzen master software. And so if you've got one of these WX CPUs, if you've already got the 2990, great, go download it. The software's available now, it's free, it works, it's awesome. You can enable dynamic local mode and it will improve the performance of games like PUBG and Battlefield and some applications. 
and AMD's slide deck, it said it was a 10 to 47% improvement with dynamic local mode. And that's largely true based on our own testing. But let's be clear about what we're talking about here because the 10 to 47% improvement is really just clawing back the performance that's lost from the regression. And so with applications like Adobe Premiere, it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference with dynamic local mode. And Indigo, I mean, even with Indigo, it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. But with the spec benchmark, which is like a business class applications benchmark, it does actually improve in that scenario. So, you know, the 2990 and the 2970WX, with some applications, but not all applications, there is that performance regression on Windows meaning that those CPUs perform much worse than the 12 and 16 core counterparts, because now we've got the 2920X, which also launched, which by the way is super zippy and awesome, and we're gonna talk more about it in a minute. Now really, it, it makes no sense, and there's no reason to have the performance regression only on Windows. It, there's no performance regression on Linux, even when the same software is available for Linux. So that 47% gain for Battlefield 1 is really just making up that regression and only in some applications. So, you know, it should never be the case that someone buying a 24 or 32 core CPU has to endure worse performance than the 12 or 16 core equivalent that, that costs less. This is a software issue though. I mean, to be clear, I don't think AMD is at fault here. The hardware is unusual though. Clearly, Linux is much better about handling the unusual case that some of the CPU cores uh, do not have direct access to memory or peripherals than Windows can hand, you know, the Windows is. I'm not sure why that is. I've spent a lot of time fiddling with it. Um, and there's not really, there's not, there's not really a clear one thing going on here. Now, that dynamic local mode is certainly a step in the right direction. But, you know, again, with Indigo, it didn't really seem to help much with, with Indigo. I mean, we could still manually intervene and manually shuffle threads around and claw back the performance, get the Windows performance on parity with Linux, but we weren't able to do that automatically. And so NVIDIA, you know, NVIDIA had some performance issues and they came out with a new driver when the 2990 launched. And so I think this is software. And so just the, the 2990WX and the 2970WX, Honestly, I think the 2970WX is probably a better value for most people, even though it's only got 24 cores. It costs less, quite a bit less, and because the CPU has eight less cores enabled, the uh, heat production is down, even though the advertised max boost speed is 4.3 gigahertz instead of the 2990's 4.2 gigahertz. So you get a little bit more clock speed. And yeah, all that's a little bit slower than the 4.4 gigahertz max turbo of the Threadripper 2950X, which that's, that's nice, let me tell you. In practice with PVO, though, between the 2990 and the 2970, there is not too much of a difference. Honestly, the advantage is more for the 2970. I mean, our setup is in a fractal defined R6 with the Intermax TR4 360 millimeter radiator. And with the 2990, I felt like we probably could have squeezed more out of our CPU if we could manage the heat and power delivery. I mean, that thing was, was sucking down upwards of 400 watts. But the 2970 with eight less cores is perhaps better than the 2990 in that regard because we're able to deliver more power to fewer cores and maintain that 3.9 to four gigahertz overclock. I mean, maybe it's that most motherboards that have the power requirements set up, you know, the 2970 is a little better in that case. Maybe we got a golden chip in the 2970, but with PBO and some tweaks in the Gigabyte UEFI, I mean, consistently 3.9 to four gigahertz all core clock speed at less than 1.2 volts, typically. I mean, around 1.2 volts, give or take. So, if you are considering buying one of the WX CPUs, I must strongly encourage you to seek out reviews and testers that have confirmed your specific software package or workflow knows how to handle these 24 and 32 core monsters. I mean, like I say, I've been rocking these CPUs for the last few weeks and the 32 core computing experience on Linux and then the 24 core computing experience on Linux, I feel like I'm the guy that, you know, the chair guy from the old Maxell, you know, tape commercials, the guy in the chair that's like freaking out uh, because it's, you know, the most amazing thing ever. I feel like that guy. I mean, that is the experience on Linux. 32 cores on the desktop is not something that I thought would be a thing two years ago. I mean, it's sort of nuts, but your mileage may vary because the rest of the ecosystem is not ready for processors that are set up like this. 
That brings us to the 12 core, the 12 core Threadripper 2920X, also available from October 29th. Now the max boost speed here is also 4.3 gigahertz, 100 megahertz slower than the, you know, the 2950X. But it's also $250 less than the 2950X. So I think if you need a lot of PCIe lanes and good memory support with a great cost performance ratio, the 2920X is for you. If the difference between 16 painters painting your room and 12 painters painting your room is worth it, then you know maybe you could consider the 2950X, but if the difference between 12 and 16 painters painting your room, 12 and 16 cores, you know, go for the 12 core, save $250, put that toward more memory or whatever. Dynamic local mode is not applicable for the you know 2920X or the 2950 because the, the dies inside those are directly connected to memory because you've only got two dies that you're using. And you can also enable NUMA non-uniform memory access or uniform memory access, depending on what your needs are for, for running stuff. Now in gaming, a lot of the benchmarks will show performance differences between Intel and AMD, sure. I mean, that's just that's just the reality of the differences between the hardware implementations. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's just differences between the platform, but real world, it's really not that much of a difference. But, to be honest, if I'm building a gaming system, I'm probably just gonna opt for a fast six core CPU at this point. And that's gonna be the end of it. Because for gaming, even the most demanding game, a high performance six core CPU, it's really all you need. I am extremely impressed with AMD's offerings overall. Threadripper has has completely changed the workstation market. I mean, our Linux workstation, I'm rocking 128 gigs of ECC memory with over four gigahertz clock speeds most of the time. I've got PCIe lanes for days. This is just, I mean, it, that's, it's insane. It's insane how awesome that is. And all of that at a lower cost than I would have thought possible two years ago. I mean, do you know how much a dual socket Xeon system was two or three years ago? I mean, you were gonna be spending five, $6,000 Without even, and the CPUs were gonna be slow. So I don't really care that GTA 5 is, you know, eight FPS slower at 1080p or two FPS slower at 4K. For me, on Threadripper, the trade-off is worth it. And there's still this mystery of why Windows doesn't handle the topology well here. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a link to a really awesome article. Ian Kutris at Anantech did a, a great article using his insane automation scripting to try to test my Core Zero idea. But to be honest, it left me with more questions than I had before. You should definitely check out that article. If anything, the, uh, you know, thinking about SVM, the performance loss without Core Zero was perhaps much worse than expected because you would think that not using Core Zero, the hyper-threaded core would be able to handle most of the load, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, there was performance loss for most things, except things like Indigo, for whatever reason. And if you look at like what's actually happening, it's like what's going on with the processes on the CPU cores, things are getting shuffled around a whole bunch. So TLDW, I guess, if you know what you're doing can really use 24 cores, the 2970WX is an unbelievable value. You get 24 cores, 4.3 gigahertz, ECC memory support on the motherboards that have validated ECC support because not every Threadripper motherboard has ECC support enabled. We always cover that in our reviews at level one, so check out our motherboard reviews. Um, it, is, it, is, it is an incredible, incredible deal. I think it's a better deal than the 2990 because the 2990 is, is kind of expensive, but I think the cost there is the sort of niche status. I mean, the, the, you know, you can always start high and, and come down over time, and it is four of the best rise and dies in one package. So for the people that need that and the people that have software that will take advantage of that, then I think they're in really good shape. I think that there's too much software out there on the Windows platform or the Windows platform itself, which will exhibit a regression when moving from 16 cores to 24 cores or 32 cores, at least on Threadripper where you don't have um, direct memory access. Now, will AMD fix that by coming up with you know, some type of infinity fabric interposer where like maybe the memory controller moves to the silicon or will AMD fix that by coming out with a new chipset that enables eight channel Threadripper systems? I don't know, but probably one of those two things will, will have to happen. Um, will dynamic local mode 
you know, will dynamic local mode continue to improve and be awesome? Yes, absolutely. Is it any reason to, you know, it's like buy now and do stuff later. If you're building the most badass Linux workstation ever, just 24 cores, 32 cores, you'll be fine. If you're worried about things on Windows, uh, the 4.4 gigahertz on the, on the 2950X is nothing to sneeze at. Maybe you could pick up the more core count CPU on the next generation because, hey, it's probably going to be drop-in compatible with X399, right? I mean, third generation? I don't know. It's exciting. The future is exciting, and it's all thanks to AMD. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out. And you can find me in the Level 1 Text Forums, and if you disagree with anything that I've said, well, I don't know. Hang out on the forum? Troll? Oh, so many thread rippers. So many threads. Gonna make a shirt, right? That, that's the joke. I don't know. What have I done? <laughs> this is the part of the video where I'm rambling, so this is where the hook comes from off screen and drags me away, so I'll catch you later. <laughs>